Ciao a tutti e benvenuti, ci troviamo in Inghilterra, ma non ci troviamo in un luogo qualsiasi dell'Inghilterra, ci troviamo nel luogo magico per eccellenza della terra inglese e nel luogo magico per eccellenza del mondo. I più attenti di voi già avranno riconosciuto il cancello che ha alle mie spalle, è il cancello che eh, ci aprirà un mondo magico e fatato, cioè il cancello che ci aprirà il mondo di Harry Potter, il principe mezzo sangue, l'attesissimo sesto film della serie del maghetto inglese che prossimamente vedremo al cinema. Finora nessun babbano è stato mai ammesso oltre questo cancello. Io avrò la possibilità di farlo e voi con me e quindi conosceremo insieme i realizzatori del film, conosceremo gli interpreti del film e soprattutto andremo a vedere da vicino e a toccare con mano le splendide scenografie che sono state create dal film di Harry Potter il Principe Mezzo Sangue e che restituiscono sul grande schermo tutta la magia di queste storie. Quindi andiamo, venite con me e scopriamo tutto quanto sul film. Siamo quindi entrati nel magico mondo di Harry Potter e nel corso di questo speciale scopriremo tutte quelle che sono le novità della storia di Harry Potter e il Principe Mezzo Sangue, le novità nella storia di nuovi personaggi. Scopriremo ad esempio come e perché i realizzatori del film sono stati in grado di far saltare per aria uno dei ponti simbolo della città di Londra, il Millennium Bridge. Scopriremo dei segreti e delle novità piuttosto esilaranti anche sul mondo del Quidditch, lo sport praticato dagli studenti di Hogwarts e dai giovani maghi. Scopriremo tutti quanti i retroscenari scena riguardo il rapporto tra Ron e Hermione con l'inserimento di un nuovo personaggio, di una ragazza che darà filo da torcere e scopriremo anche l'identità di un nuovo professore, un professore che prenderà il posto di, del professor Piton come insegnante di pozioni nella scuola di Hogwarts. The thing about this film is that when it's when it's light and comedic and funny, it's much lighter than any of the films have been previously. Yeah. But when it's dark, it's much darker than any of them have been, I think. Um, so yeah, I mean I think those extremes are kind of Uh, are pushed further apart actually in, in, in this film. In the sense that what you get is you get these lovely nuanced little detailed character moments yeah. and then suddenly people are fighting dragons and armies of dead people and um, and Harry Potter 6 is very much that you know uh, it's got these really delicate tender funny playful little scenes between characters and then in the next sequence we're off fighting the army of the dead in a great big cave and a big, big lake so It's that combination of stuff which I think is really charming. This um, film has, whilst wrapped around in the, you know, the, the dark overtones of um, the, uh, the, the conflict with Voldemort, we actually have at its heart this lovely, warm, tender and funny romantic entanglement uh, because uh, we get to see Ron have his first kiss, which is uh, a lovely moment but not for Hermione, because Hermione is very upset. She's jealous because she secretly wishes Ron was giving her his first kiss. Um, we see Harry, who also uh, is, is jealous, because Ginny, who, uh, unbeknownst to her, he would like to, uh, to be involved with, is involved with Dean Thomas. Uh, mm. And so there's this lovely, warm, um, uh, romantic entanglement at the center. So that's, in story terms, that's uh, a big new uh, element. Uh, we have new characters. We have um, Lavender Brown, who is Ron's love interest, who is played by uh, the lovely uh, Jessie Kaye. Yes. 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 Well, of course I'll wear it. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go and vomit. <laughs> yeah, Lavender is... Uh, she's, she's Ron Weasley's first girlfriend. And she does kind of um, fit in with the kind of budding romance, mm. romances that are going on really in this film. Um, she's very feisty, she's very um, obsessed really by Ron, you know, she, and she, she acts as a catalyst really with Hermione and, and boosts basically Ron and Hermione to eventually get together. Mm. And so she, 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 she provides a lot of humor um, she's laughed at and she 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 definitely kind of she she annoys a few a fair few people really he sort of gets his first go uh, girlfriend with uh, lavender who is quite scary and she does sort of he does sort of scare on a little bit because she's really sort of full-on and really mm. in your face and 
So she's very physical, you know, she's very, she wants to kind of assert her kind of name all over him. The challenges that she has to face mainly in this one are kind of more emotional than mm. physical. She's kind of not really part of the action um, because uh, most of the action takes place with Dumbledore and Harry kind of finding the Horcrux, so she's not really part of that. Um, but she, she for the first time kind of realises that she has feelings for Ron mm. and then she kind of has her heart broken a little bit because Ron gets it together with this girl called Lavender and so Hermione kind of for the first time experiences jealousy and disappointment and I think she's really confused and overwhelmed by how upset mm. she is if that makes sense. This set is called The Chamber and uh, it's basically a deserted classroom that mm. Hermione kind of finds uh, to kind of hide in basically after she sees Ron kiss Lavender, mm. and this is where Harry finds her, and she's kind of sat on that step, and she, yeah, she's crying because, she, I don't know, she's just so kind of overwhelmed and confused and hurt. But also I think Harry's relationship with, um, obviously with Ginny, is a, a massive, uh, uh, a, a new kind of occurrence, because sort of in the first few films, Ginny had a bit of a crush on Harry, and and it went away and now she's got a boyfriend at the beginning of this film suddenly really realises that he, he, he actually quite fancies her and, and is very, very attracted to her. So it's a, he's in a bit of a quandary because he, he doesn't... Um, she's his best friend's little sister, right. which is a very, very tricky situation right. to kind of navigate, I think. Open up, you. Don't you trust me? Stop. Just uh, go. Hi. Lovely. No. Yeah, it's been. I think it's been a, a big transition for her as a character. I think she started off being a really shy younger sister, and now she's obviously stepped bit more out of her skin and become a bit more outgoing. I mean, I think you saw that a, a bit in, in the last film, but I think in this one there is that real big step up for her, and I think she's just comfortable, I think, with who she is, and she's, I think, being with so many older brothers, she's actually become, she's already, she was already confident in, in mm. speaking to people, and I think it really shows in this film, and obviously there's the relationship with Harry, and she just steps out and really understands, I think, what's going on. Tutto questo appunto per quanto riguarda le novità, ma ci sono dei punti fermi per quanto riguarda la storia di Harry Potter. I Mangiamorte continuano nel loro cammino e il Lord Voldemort continua a tramare nell'ombra per ottenere il suo risultato. Per questo all'inizio del film Albus Silente chiederà ad Harry Potter di aiutarlo, di aiutarlo a convincere un ex professore di Hogwarts, um, Ores Lumacorno a tornare ad insegnare per loro perché cercherà di convincerlo a farlo perché è convinto al bussilente che Lumacorno sia detentore del segreto per sconfiggere Lord Voldemort nel frattempo però Draco Malfoy vuole vendicare l'imprigionamento di suo padre e lo vedremo, lo, lo seguiremo e assisteremo al suo peregrinare per i corridoi della scuola nell'intento di scoprire i segreti che per me, gli permetteranno per l'appunto di vendicare l'imprigionamento del padre Dumbledore in this film is constantly kind of coming to terms with his own mortality and I think he know he possibly is now considering the fact that uh, it, it's not long perhaps before he's he's no longer of this world